Welcome to the Your Turing Podcast. Today, we're going to talk with Amit Takar. And Amit was a traditional product manager, grew up as an engineer, had a fantastic career with semiconductor companies, with venture capitalists, and suddenly decided to confront himself to find out what he was going to do. And how he did this is fascinating. So he made several pivots, not only in his career, but on how he was looking at things. We talk about investing, about Dogecoin. We talk about investing in yourself, in being yourself. We talk about feminine and masculine energy. All in all, a very fascinating story. Enjoy the conversation. All right, Amit, welcome to the Your Turn podcast. Um, I'm really very enthusiastic to welcome you in, into the podcast because you have a very fascinating story to tell. Um, we're going to talk about your different pivots you had in your career and also in, in well-being and, and, and the way you look at things. going to talk about this, but uh, let's first introduce yourself uh, a little bit. Great. Thank you so much, Cedric, and uh, very happy to be here on your, on your podcast. Uh, yeah, so I'm, uh, uh, my name is Amit, and uh, I've been mainly an operational guy, I think, for most of my career, uh, primarily in, in product management roles, so, uh, and across uh, a couple of few industries, I would say. Uh, I started off uh, in engineering uh, back in back in the 2000s at, uh, at NVIDIA, and then, uh, yeah, the journey uh there's a bunch of pivots uh, along the way, as you mentioned, and uh, uh, yeah, so we can we can talk more about that. But yeah, primarily product operational experience. Yeah. So um, so you 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 were having a corporate job, and um, at a certain moment, you decided maybe that's no longer for you. So can you maybe tell us a bit what happened. Yeah, that was uh, it was it was a, it was a big big change in my life, uh, and this happened. Uh, I would say. Um, Pre-COVID, I think I think just before COVID, uh, the pandemic came. So I think around in 2019, uh, I'd been at that time I'd been working for I think uh, I'd been in various corporate roles for for 15 or 16 years at, uh, by that point. Um, and uh, one thing that that was was kind of that led to that was what was happening to me was uh, at every role after a few years I would start to get a little. Uh, uh, a little anxious, little, little, uh, little jumpy, like, mm -hmm. you know, that, uh, little feeling starting this, this feeling of not feeling happy or, or feeling like something's missing. And, and so typically my response to that, and it usually happened after a while. And my response to that would be, okay, that means I need a new job. I, I need to go look for a new company or a new role, or, or I need to get promoted or whatever. Like, you know, I just, it, that, that's how I attributed that feeling. Uh, but what I noticed was after that happened like three or four times that, that, duration before that that feeling came back started getting shorter and shorter at every role until the last role where i was at, at a vc firm uh great 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 firm uh but it happened within a year like within a year i was just like i'm i'm unhappy i'm feeling anxious i i'm, I'm feeling trapped I, I i'm not i'm not happy uh and so that ended and typically when things would end and the next pivot would come, my general reaction would be to, okay, let's go find another role. Let's go, let's go find what else is out there. Um, this time I decided not to do that uh, because I felt like uh, I, I I was just, just kind of maybe a little mindlessly kind of jumping from role to role. Um, and so this this last pivot that that occurred i i purposely forced myself to just take a step back uh and maybe cliche is do some soul searching uh and really figure out you know what what i wanted out of life you know because now at this point i'm in my 40s right i've 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 done the corporate circuit and uh i've i've seen corporate life uh and so yeah that was that was mainly my main motivation at that point was uh there was this underlying feeling of sort of dread uh darkness i would say like that would come in at the end of when when it was time to switch a role and so my, what i decided was i'm going to go i'm going to sit with that i'm going to study that uh i'm going to not run away from it because typically what would happen is you know those feelings would come in and to to get away from them i would go jump to a new role then i'm distracted i'm not looking at the underlying you know sense of whatever that was that, that was i didn't know what it was and so this time i decided you know screw it i'm going to just I'm not going to do anything until I figure out what that is, what, yeah. what that is. And so that, that, that's essentially where my corporate journey stopped. And I decided that, you know, for me, 
you know, one of the real biggest realizations that came up for me was that uh, the what things matter to me, right? And for me, one of the, the top, top things for me came out was I value my freedom over anything else, like just having uh, freedom of my time. Uh, and that doesn't align super well with the traditional nine to five corporate role. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I, I've loved some of the work I've done, like, like some of the jobs I've had, like it's been amazing experiences, worked with amazing people. But again, as part of a corporate, typical corporate career, you know, you are constrained by that nine to five lifestyle. And, you know, there are certain things you have to work within the boundaries of being in an organization and, and, and things that come. And, and I think for me, it came to the point where I realized that that was sometimes too stifling for me. Like, uh, like I, I work, uh, my, my, I just work very differently. Mm-hmm. And so I just decided, you know, number one for me is freedom in my lifestyle. Uh, and I want to work. I love working. I'm ambitious, uh, but it has to incorporate that freedom. So that's, that's a long-winded answer to to how how I kind of sort of ended up there, and, and there's there's a lot more details behind that, but that's that's sort of the high level. Yeah. All right. And and we're gonna ask the details, so don't worry. Uh, <laughs> so, how came you about it? That okay, this time is a time that I won't go into another corporate role, but I'm really gonna stay uh, take a step back. I mean, because you could easily go into another role. So, was there yeah. a specific moment, a, a, a trigger? Yeah, it, it it's hard to say, Cedric. I mean, I think for me, uh, um, one of the things I I had I would say what what sort of triggered that a little bit was um, something in me. I don't know. Uh, some some voice in me was just told me that you know, look, I, I'm an engineer, right? I, I've been from an engineering background. Uh, I've, even product roles, have just, it's been very analytical, yeah. very analytical mind, uh, very left brain. I, I think, as you call it, you know, just 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 very logical. That's how I've been throughout my career. But as I sort of came to this point of my career and, and I decided that, hey, you know, this is this is ending here and I need to step back. I think there was a voice in me that was just saying that, hey, just listen to the other side of your of your of your mind, right? The right side. Uh, listen to your gut. Right. Mm-hmm. Listen to. You. So there was something in my gut. I would say this is this, this wasn't a very well thought out decision, but it was if you can call it listening to my gut, listening to my heart, uh, you know, just listening to my soul, maybe like just just if you want to get really crazy. But. It was just just a voice in there that just said, "This is not the time. Yeah. This is not the time to for you to go off and look for a job." And I, it didn't make any logical sense. Like it absolutely, like to my logical mind, it was like, "This doesn't make any sense." Like uh, you know, I've been working for fifteen, sixteen years, like to just stop without a plan. Like I mean, I'm, I'm, again, being a logical guy, you always plan. You you know, you got things you know set up. You're you know everything's always lined up, you try to control things. And this was just maybe call it whatever the universe, call it whatever spirit, whatever God, whatever you want to call whatever energy you want to call it. Uh, uh, it was just like, you know, just, just, just stop, just stop what you're doing. Uh, because clearly there was something wrong. Because what was happening was at every role, near the end, I was I was getting into this almost sort of depressive state where I, I didn't like where I was, even though, and it was nothing to do with the company or the people. Like I've, I've had been very lucky in every role I've had, but there was just something that would just come up near the end, this darkness that like, and I'd be unhappy. And so, so I think this, whatever this gut feeling was, it was, it was just kind of like a revelation moment. Like was just, don't do anything. Just, just sit with yourself. It was very uncomfortable uh, because I didn't know, I couldn't see the path ahead. You know, like all I knew was working, right? So I, I couldn't see a path ahead. But it was at the same time, there was just almost like just have trust, have faith that this will resolve itself. Uh, and I think, you know, ultimately, I think what, what I mean, now that I look back, it was it was immensely healing for me, like uh, to not have to just sort of run off and do something and distract myself, you know, because I mean, the mind wants to just be busy and and also it's uncomfortable, right? You don't have money coming in. Like, you know, it's just, you've been working your whole life. It's just, I mean, luckily, I, again, I had a great career, so I had a lot of great savings, so I could afford to step back and and do this. I realize not everyone can have that luxury, but um, I was lucky enough to do that. But yeah, it, was, it, was, it wasn't really, I, to be honest, said, it wasn't really thought out. It was just something in my gut that was just telling me that, uh, hey, man, you got to you gotta slow down here and... Uh, uh, you got to figure this out because, yeah. because, you know, the path you're on is fine. The current path, the corporate path, but this is not, this is not for you. Like there was just, that was it. That was it. It was just like, this is not for you. I didn't know what the new thing was, 
which is why I was so uncomfortable. And, 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 and it wasn't like I figured this out in a day or two. Like I, I sat with this, I would say for over a year and I'm still figuring it out. Like it's still not fully, fully clear for me. Like I, I've taken a few steps since then that it's a couple of pivots, but it's still not satisfied. It's not where I want to be. Yep. It's still uncomfortable because it's, 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 it's almost like the path is kind of unrolling in front of me as I, as I kind of take it one step at a time in this sort of, because corporate was, that way was a lot easier where you, I just knew what was coming, right? We know what's coming. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. There's uncertainty there about, you know, where you end up in your career, but you know, you're in a role and, you know, and, and then there's, there'll be the next role and there's a certain journey. This is something that's totally different for me. Like it's, it's very, uh, I mean, I got what I wished for. I got the freedom, right? Yeah. So the freedom came. But with the freedom, what I also comes is is a lot, lot of uh, you know it's not always very predictable. It, yeah. There's a lot of uncertainty that I just had to get comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they say with freedom comes great responsibility as well, also to yes, your yes, So, but absolutely. what did you do? And and everybody is seeking. Um, um, and exactly when when you're in corporate, it is predictable. So you you have to seek less. Huh? But then your yeah. path, you're seeking one of. The big things you could have done is okay i'm gonna do this and immediately head down and going into a certain path but you yeah. are not doing this clearly so you you take a step back did you do this consciously and how did you prevent yourself from blindly going into a certain direction yeah that's a great question um it was a conscious decision to not pick any path uh it, it, and to be honest because um uh, when I when I stepped away from corporate, I wasn't feeling good because uh, I wasn't feeling good because I I knew that something was wrong, like something wasn't working out. Something wasn't even though I, as much as I learned and had great experiences, there was always something in the back of my mind that wasn't happy with that. Right, so I knew that the path I had picked for myself for the past fifteen, sixteen years, right, and that's the standard path. Like you know, like you grow up, you're you're told like, hey, you know get good grades, you yeah. know, get into a great school, get in a great university, get a great job, get promoted. You know, that's the life, right? White picket fence, all that stuff. And I think what was sort of crushing, a little crushing or a little unnerving for me was that that path that I had picked that I thought was the ideal path for my life, because that's what everyone takes. That's what you're supposed to do. You know, went to good school, got good jobs. That wasn't fulfilling me. Right, so that that's why it was a bit of a shock, right? And and it, it took fifteen, six. It took that long to, for me to. I mean, I was in my forties, but it took, I guess, forty years of my life to figure out that this non quote unquote traditional path wasn't for me, right? And so that kind of shook me to my core because my entire way of working, my entire way of operating in life was based on that belief mm -hmm. that you know, that this is this is going to be life. Life is going to be this way, right? And it's going to go like this, like a straight. Yeah. arrow like this right and to realize that you know that path wasn't for me was it just shook me so um so that's why it was a conscious decision that look you know i need to uh kind of go back to the drawing board uh i need to it was almost like cedric i had i i, I figured that my foundations that i had built my life on it was great i mean everything was great nothing nothing to complain about but those foundations were no longer working for where I wanted to go. Like I had to, I had to come on. It, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be this next change. This next pivot wasn't going to be a cosmetic change. It wasn't going to be, Hey, let me find another job here. Or, or let me, maybe even if maybe a little more ex extreme, like let me switch industries or let me do this. Even that wasn't going to work because for me, those were all sort of cosmetic changes. I had to go down to the foundation. I had to rip it all apart. Yeah. Because the previous foundations were based on the certain thinking that this is how life is, you know, corporate job, etc. Which is there's nothing wrong with that. It it works for obviously a lot of people. But I just realized that that wasn't what was working for me anymore. So uh that's why I resist it was hard to so I had resisted it was almost like and that's what the voice in my head was telling me. You have to rip your foundations out. You have oh. to go in huh? deep. Um and ripping foundations cannot happen. Like if I went off to another path, then again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of ignoring that. And then the foundation still shaky, right? I, I would go off. I'd, I'd probably do well or okay. Cause you know, I work hard. I'm, I'm reasonably intelligent. So I, I would figure it out. But again, the foundation would have been like, you know, bouncy and it would have come crashing down again, like pretty soon after I'm pretty sure. And so this was like a whole, it was a much, it was, it was ripping the house apart, ripping the foundations apart. And then 
redoing the foundations like completely uh, and so that's that's what it was i mean i mean again during the the way there's a lot of like I, and again i'm i'm kind of the kind of kind of person that i love learning constantly i'm very curious about things so yeah there were a lot of things that you know i during that journey for example i discovered crypto right like that was right. and it was it initially started as as a more of a, as an intellectual curiosity versus like you know you know coins going to the moon and you know making a lot of money but that led to along the way that led to some great investments that uh, you know luckily have done at least they did well in 2021 2022 has been a different uh, thing but yeah so there was a lot of things i learned along the way that, that i was looking but I, I didn't commit to any one path i didn't say that hey this is what i'm taking right now it was very uncomfortable but i also knew that my it i just had to redo my foundations mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. so yeah and what were the tools to rip out the foundations do you, you, you have uh, pen and paper meditation walks what, yeah what did you do great question yeah the the tool uh it, it wasn't logical it wasn't uh, it wasn't a lot of i mean it, there was part of a logic but uh, uh uh i think for me the key thing was yeah a lot of meditation but more than meditation i think uh what really i had to do when i, I mentioned the healing earlier um it was it was really healing uh, a lot of things inside me because you know there was there was there was a lot of i would say darkness pain uh anxiety that was in there that i had done a great job of ignoring my whole life right and so really my biggest tool Cedric has been throughout this journey was to just sit you know if, if listen we we're all we're all human right like so, so some days we have good days some days we have bad days we all have call it insecurities or things that have, mm -hmm. you know that have hurt us in the past and you know you kind of move on or or things that make you anxious or nervous or scared or things that you're afraid of there's fear we all have fear that's the human experience um but i think Traditionally, what we're taught, and at least what I was taught growing up, and the way I was conditioned to grow up, was you know, hey, positivity is good, and negativity is bad, right? And so, what what I the way I dealt with that was, hey, if any uncomfortable feeling ever came in, you know, if I was ever anxious or afraid or embarrassed or ashamed, you know, to quickly just you know sweep it off under the rug, right? Like let it, you know, it's 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 yucky, it's yucky, it's I'm not supposed to feel that way. I'm not supposed to feel uh, nervous. I'm not supposed to be feel ashamed. I'm not supposed to be feel angry or or lose my temper or whatever. Like you know, whatever things we assign as negative emotions. Mm -hmm. And so I became great at any time those feelings came up to just just kind of run away from them to 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 distract myself and 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 look the other way or you know what whatever coping mechanisms we all sort of build to to kind of you know quote unquote stay brave and positive and and deal with life. Um, that time, uh, I think the, the one of the biggest tools that I I, uh, I used at that time was to just almost just uh, surrender. So, if I'm feeling like crap, if if I'm feeling nervous, let's say like like I and I, I dealt with a lot of anxiety through my life. Just it was just something that um, I haven't talked a lot about, but it was just always there, and I would always I I did a great job of masking it away and not. Yeah not not having it you know come out uh, in my everyday interactions and uh i just said you know what bring it on like you know i it, whatever comes up inside whatever emotions and there was a lot there was a lot that came up and uh i was just like you know i'm no longer running away from this uh, and so that was that was really what the foundational piece was the found, first piece of the foundational piece was to just face the other side of me, you know, there's a light side. I think we all, we all have it. We have a light side and we have a dark side, right? Yeah. And the dark side is our shadows, right? The yeah. stuff that you don't want to look at that, like all the stuff, right? Insecurities, fear and gunk. And, uh, that was the tool I used was to just, uh, you know what I'm at, I'm going to, I'm going to face me. You know, there's, there's this, all of this stuff inside me that's swirling in there. I don't know what it is. It's uncomfortable. It's, it's ugly in, in, in a lot of ways. It, it doesn't, it's 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 just real right? it was just raw stuff right and uh, i spent and i'm still going through that like it's 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 like it's 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 an ongoing journey but i faced so much inner uh i i think pain going back to to childhood uh you know things that might have happened as a kid or whatever or things that might have embarrassed me moments where i was extremely anxious or scared uh all of that emotions came back it was mm -hmm. like an ocean of just like the tsunami almost that came once I decided that I'm going to surrender. Uh, it was 
not an easy thing to go through because when those emotions are coming up, it was also a lot of, you know, the other thing that we all have in our shadows sometimes is, is a lot of negative self-talk. Yeah. You know, like we tend to be our biggest critics a lot of times, right? Like, and I, it was with me, it was very true. Like I, I generally, when I speak to people, I'm very, I'm very supportive. I'm very positive. I, I, I very rarely will, will try to criticize someone or be very super critical but you should listen to the voice in my head and how it talks to me sometimes, right? Like, and especially at that time, it was, and I think we all go through a lot of that. And my, the voice in my head was, I mean, it was brutal. It was brutal. Like some of the things that just my inner self-talk that would try to put me down saying that, oh, you screwed up here. You should have done way better here. Oh, this is bad. Oh, you know, you, you're not, you're not good enough. You know, you're not worthy enough. You know, like it was just this yeah. constant, like almost like this little demon that's just constantly, you know, no matter how good I do, it's it. You know, it'll come back to bring me back down to earth, right? So, right. is it like anyways, more reactions than to the outside world? Yeah, yeah. just constantly reacting, constantly yeah. reacting, constant commentary on how what I did was wrong or not good enough or or could have been better or just just constantly criticizing myself, right? And and you're just constantly like in this fight or flight mode. Like I was just constantly in this fight or flight mode. I didn't even realize. I thought that was normal way of operating, right? It wasn't even like, because I was just busy working. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's this dark voice that's just constantly beating up on me, right? Telling me that. And, and so these were the kind of things that were slowly the light was going on in my head. This is why you get anxious. This is why you get unhappy at roles because you're all, you're almost trying to just survive all that. Like I was just trying to survive at these roles, right? No matter, I mean, there were great roles. I was making lots of money and great benefits, but if I stripped it all away, I was just trying to survive because, yeah. uh, you know, I was trying to move through this with all this, this negative self-talk and these fears and anxieties that were there and I'm, I'm just dodging them and like, just, just going through it. So anyway, that's, that was my biggest tool, Cedric, was to just, sit back and just let that all come at me. So there was a lot of times where I would be sitting, literally just sitting there yeah. and that negative voice is screaming at me, telling me that, you know, you suck, you're, you're not good enough, uh, you know, or, or just feeling really low about myself. But I was like, you know what? I'm not going to reason with this. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to let it, it was almost like it's an energy, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to let it flow through my system. Let it flow through my body. I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to do nothing. And, uh, that was that was the the starting point for me. Like yeah. just just yeah. surrender, surrender. Yeah. Right? And it, it, we talk about it in Buddhism and mindful practices. Um, that's where it all started for me. Uh, very fundamental. And actually, I just yeah. had a conversation uh, uh, about this. Man, many people wear masks. They yeah behave the way they ought to be, or they think they they should be. Um, yeah. And then we have on the one side, the, the, the result is that many people are locked up in that golden cage because they think they have to maintain the big car, the big house, uh, you name it, or yeah. they put themselves in a place yeah. when they have a lot of uh, big financial, uh, um, uh, financial uh, responsibilities. Uh, yeah. At the same time, there is that inner voice, uh, not necessarily saying that you are bad, but maybe, okay, who is, who is the real me and yeah. uh, finding the path for that, for that person. And you, you can stay in corporate and, and in in different setting, but it can also uh, pivot in a completely different direction. Um, yeah. And in one of our previous conversations, we, you 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 and uh, we were talking about the abundance mindset versus the scarcity mindset. How this did influence you? Big time, big time. Um, because I think uh, it's funny. Like before, uh, I didn't realize it, but I was in a very scarcity mindset, and I, I mentioned a word survival, right? So that was the almost call it like the, I was operating off my, call it the reptilian brain, right? Like, which was like, uh, always constantly fight or flight, right? Always looking for, always competing, right? And, and competing is okay. There's nothing wrong with competing. Competing is great. But, but when you're just constantly doing it from a place of, oh my God, I got to be better than this guy. I got to be better than that person. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get all promoted by this. this just, just every person you come across, when you get into that super competitive, hyper competitive mindset, I mean, it can work well in certain environments, in in sports and stuff, or or you know, again, it 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 it's a, it's it can be done in a healthy way, but when it comes into a scarcity mindset, then you're just sort of you're almost feeling threatened by everything around you, and 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 so your response to that is to lash out and and yeah. to 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 kind of you know come at it in a in a in a way that's not not healthy, right? So, 
again and that's that's a lot of negativity as well like you know because because again you're just you're just trying to survive uh and so this was the other thing that kind of light bulb that went off in my head was when i when i took a pause back was i've been in survival mode my whole life i realized right like so that and and you know again being in, in survival mode the the key feeling the key emotion that drives you when you're in survival mode is fear right because you 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 and and it's a legit fear when we were cavemen or cave women you know and you're, you're out in the savanna yeah the fear helps you right like cuz it helps you not be eaten by a lion or whatever right but i i think we've evolved past that you know so yeah. every day you know that we don't need that day to day yes it's like maslow's hierarchy right like so yes you need to survive you 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 you, you don't you can't get you know you, you won't you don't want to perish but that can't be a way of operating you know, if, if you want to achieve sort of your highest, you know, mm -hmm. highest path or, you know, your highest potential. And so that's what I realized. I was like, okay, so I've been operating in this sort of survival scarcity. You know, there's not enough for everyone. There's not enough of a pie for everyone. You know, I gotta, I gotta go and get mine and, you know, compete and whatever and claw, create whatever to prove myself, prove my worth. Cause you know, that's the only way I'm going to get what I deserve. Uh, versus the other, and, and the other side that like you mentioned the abundant mindset that's kind of coming at it from more from hey uh, instead of expecting the world to come in and fulfill you expecting the you know something outside to come in and make you feel better it's sort of knowing on the inside that hey i i am abundant you yeah. know i am i am full uh and and you know what I, i'm not here to just survive i'm here to thrive right like there's more to more to life like yeah sure i will compete with people or i'll compete with companies but that'll be more like a game. It won't, it, it's not going to be a do or die kind of situation, right? So uh, it, it's sort of incorporating, you know, and, and as part of that would be, hey, not just using my logical mind all the time to do things, but but tuning into my heart, so co combining the heart and the mind, yeah. combining my gut, my soul, my, you know, using all parts of me, looking at the light and the dark, you know? So if you're in an abundant mindset, that doesn't mean that you'll have bad days. You won't have good days or you, you won't have bad days. But being honest, being raw, being authentic, you know, so that means looking at the darkness within, you know, because that, that, you know, that's part of me, right? So that was a big switch uh, in in my mindset. Um, and, uh, and you know, I, I, it, again, it was part of the foundational healing because it was, you know, my foundations, again, my foundations were, my old foundations were everything is scarce outside. There's not enough. I have to go and, you know steal kick cream or whatever like you know to to plunder to <laughs> to do well versus this new style was where okay in my foundations i know i'm abundant you know i i i'm fulfilled internally now this is the and this is the this is the amit that now comes at life this is the amit that now comes at other people right and now i approach life with this more abundant mindset uh, it's not easy um the way you get there is ironically by facing the feelings of lack inside you mm -hmm. because you can't fake it you can't say that I, i'm i mean you can't fake it i mean you you can tell yourself i feel abundant i feel abundant but as long as you're not facing your darkness inside you and and there might be just a a voice in you that's telling you that you don't have enough you don't have enough you know you don't have and it it, it, it will always be there <laughs> until you face it and allow it and that's how it switched for me yeah it's it's very profound and, and thank you for uh, your openness and and we briefly yeah. spoke about your your path and it's laid out in front of you um yeah at the same time do you see the kind of a direction it is going yeah every day and I, and and again there there are days where i'm just like man where is this going like honestly like it's sometimes some days it's just like cuz it's very it's still very foreign to me i've been used to a very kind of milestone driven and 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 you know uh clear path in front of me uh but but yeah it is it is starting to shape up cedric and um the the interesting thing is uh, when i quote unquote started this journey of cutting off from corporate and moving on you know there, at that time there were things in my mind that i thought might be what i like or what i want to do the interesting is uh, as i said as i did this sort of, uh, I'll call it shadow work. There's a term that's used for this, for facing your inner darkness. Mm -hmm. They call it, you know, shadow work in sort of spiritual circles. So as I did more and more of the shadow work, it was interesting, the, the more real me sort of came out. And the more confident I became in, you know, answering the question of what I want, what I like, uh, what I want to do, um, you know, versus just kind of picking at something. And that's fine too, you can pick at things. But anyway, just long answer short, it, it kind of... Uh, made some things clear. So, so for example, for me, um, some of the answers that came is, uh, 
you know, there, there was like two or three things in my life that, you know, and, and these were sort of hints to me. These are things that I've always, I always uh, gravitate towards, even if I'm not getting paid. Like, even if I'm not, no one's paying me or, or doing anything, like I will, I will just on my own, I find myself doing these things. And so that was a hint for me. So for me, some of those things were uh, uh, research slash investing. So I've always been, uh, I mean, as an investor, I've, I've just been like a small time just, just doing my own portfolio and, and stocks and stuff like that. And, and then crypto happened. But I, I realized that I have a knack for this stuff I, I because I, I, uh, I, I have the patience to, and I, I'm kind of like a more long-term, I'm not a trader. Uh, that, that does not, that's not my uh, strength at all. But like, so investing is one area that, that I think a lot of my, the way my brain works uh, is uh, it, 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 I realized it might be a good fit for sort of like a long-term investing stuff. So that was one hint. The other thing was strategic thinking. So again, I've, I've done a lot of product and strategy through my career. And as much as my inner voice kept telling me I sucked at it, uh, and sometimes when I would share that with people, they would be shocked because the response I'd get externally would be like, are you mad? Like you've been, you know, so good at this, whatever. So that was another hint that, you know, so I, I like the strategic, I do like thinking about things at a high level. Yeah. Uh, I've done a lot of stuff at the, at the ground level and like operationally and, 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 you know, been in the trenches. But I think as my career went on, I realized that uh, sort of like a high level view of strategy and things are, are things that, uh, for especially product strategy, really align for me. And then the third thing was I realized I love writing uh, and writing was something I used to do way back. Uh, I'm talking like high school and stuff. Like I was, uh, I was, I used to enjoy it and then it just got lost in the, in the shuffle. Yeah. And so, um, very recognizable actually. I, yeah, I, I, I used to paint and draw and yeah. I picked it up again a couple of years ago. I spoke with, uh, just with, uh, in, in a previous uh, podcast with Peter Snowart, who is a, a guitar yeah. player and is back at it at, at a almost semi-professional or at the semi-professional level. Amazing. Uh, you're the same, right? We, we hide parts of ourselves to, to do something that maybe is not our path or that maybe we yeah. not, should be doing. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, that completely resonates with me, uh, Cedric. So yeah, th those were the sort of the three things. So I think for me, uh, two of those are happening. The, the strategy part, uh, I'm, I'm doing it as a consultant right now. Uh, and the writing part I've been writing for, I think, uh, about a year and a half, couple of years now, uh, ever since I kind of, I stepped away from things, but the writing just came back with a passion, just came back with a force. Uh, and yeah, the investing thing is the third one that I'm, I'm still figuring out. Uh, like I'm doing, again, I've been doing stuff on my own, on my own portfolio, personal portfolio, but, uh, I've been trying to figure out, okay, how do I how do I take this forward as a more of a professional option? And, and, and so that's the, yeah. yeah, those are sort of my three pillars. I would think. Okay. <laughs> and and may, uh, a slight, uh, side question. When will Dogecoin hit uh, a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from that coin. That's what I was saying. Like, so, you know, just, again, just a side note on this. Um, and again, this tells you, this also told me why my, my mind would be good for investing. So I invested in crypto. My first, I think I, I, I bought some Bitcoin and some Ethereum at the time. This is when bear market, this is after the 2017 bull had crashed and yeah. burned and everything, uh, people had been burned. Like I think Bitcoin was $3,000. Ethereum was like, I don't know, hundred bucks, 150 bucks. Right. So, uh, and I, again, I had left corporate. I had a lot of time on my hands. So I, I started looking into crypto and, and, um, uh, as an asset class and, and, uh, I think for me, the decentralized aspect of things is really, it really resonated with mm -hmm. me. Like just, just, uh, that's a whole different rabbit hole. But anyway, so I got into that. I started buying these coins and nothing happened for, I think uh, a year and a half, right? Like they just sat there uh, just going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And suddenly I think December, I think it was 2020 or something like it, uh, they started exploding. Right. And by the time March came around, March, 2021, March, April, 2021, people, you know, my uncles, for example, they were buying Dogecoin, right? And uh, that's the point where I knew, oh my God, this is going to come crashing down at some point. Yeah. So like, anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's um, the best thing there is inform yourself, do your own research. There's yeah. so many work pools, yeah. big launches and, and so on. So, um, so, yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. And don't follow the herd. Don't follow the herd. That's, uh, you yeah. can get burned that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when, um, did you ever think of combining those, uh, three, uh, passions of yours? Yeah, I think, 
I have, I have. Uh, and I think that might be ultimately where this is all headed. Um, so right now the writing is about just what I've, we're speaking about. I write about all, all of these sort of realizations that I've had along the way about finding your path. And, and I call it the highest path, your highest potential in life and, and, you know, facing your darkness, your shadows, fading. So I write a lot about that. The strategy stuff is happening. I'm right now currently consulting with companies on, you know, strategy and, and stuff. Uh, the investing path hasn't happened yet, but I think hopefully at some point in the future, um, like if I become a, a investor at a, at a more professional scale at, or, you know, where I'm investing in either startups or, or whatever that looks like, uh, I think I would have to combine the, like what I would bring to the table would be as an investor would be the strategy mindset. Um, and, and definitely I would love to write about that stuff right again, as I, as I evolve on that journey, because I just love sharing. Uh, I enjoy writing. It's just, uh, it, one, it, it does two things for me. One is, uh, writing helps me think myself. Like a lot of times I don't know what the thoughts are or until I actually sit down and, and start writing. And, and then it, Sometimes the thoughts in me, like my mind tends to be a lot of garble sometimes because it, yeah. it's running at a thousand miles an hour. So it helps to kind of like just put those thoughts on paper. So I know what I'm thinking sometimes. And second, I, it, it helps that, you know, I've gotten feedback that people who read some of the, the stuff I've written is, you know, they, you know, like I've spoken to people like, oh my God, you know, I was feeling the exact same way. And it's good to know I wasn't the only one. And especially like I, I'm talking about this darkness and the foundational, ripping the foundation. I wrote about that and that article got a lot of feedback. Uh, one, people were surprised that I was going through that myself because, I, like I said, I was very good at wearing a mask and nobody knew what was happening internally. And second, it was a lot of, I was very surprised people who came to me and said, like, I was going through the exact same thing. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I was myself was surprised when they told me that because I was like, oh, my God, you look like you had it all together. And, uh, and, and it's not really about having it together, but... You know, it's just you just don't realize what anyone's going through. So yeah, but yeah, sorry. I'm, uh, again, I, I'm rambling, but yeah, I, I want to bring those together. Hopefully, they'll come together at some point. Yeah, way. yeah, yeah. And ah, you, you, you're still an engineer, uh, right? So, do you have a process or some system that um, uh, that you, that you uh, go through with your ideas? I do. Uh, I do. So for me. Uh, it's it's a bit of a balance that I've I've come to now. Um, I'll say before my again my on my old life my process was just very logical. You know, pick a logical process, do the you know pros and cons, and 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 you know, figure do your research and and, and figure it out. Right. Uh, I still do that, but now it's become a little different, um, and I, I'm I'm going to call it like almost like. Um, the, my, my, the way my process starts now is it's almost as if I balance, I go balance my inner masculine and my inner feminine. And what I mean by that is we all have this inside us, right? So I'm, I'm going to go a little bit of tangent here. So we all have this sort of masculine energy and feminine energy. And what I'm, I don't mean it in terms of a gender. I don't mean what a man versus woman. The masculine energy inside us uh, is the doer right? The planner, right? Like the, where oh, you right. approach the world and you, you come up with the process, your, your logical, I'll call it almost like your logical mind, your logical brain, your logical thinking. The feminine energy inside us is the more the receiver, right? You know, that where the creative ideas come from, right? Like where uh, inspiration comes from, creativity, insights, you know, visions, you know, hey, this is the vision I have for my business, right? Like that, that's not a, something, typically that's not a very logical thing. It, it's something that just, you know, even creative ideas, sometimes if you think about it, like your best creative, brilliant ideas, you probably didn't think them. Like, I, I can almost guarantee you did not think them. They just kind of hit you like a bowl. You might have been in the shower, like, you know, with, with, you know, putting soap on and, and suddenly like, you're like, oh my God, like this, this hits me, right? So that's, that's the feminine, that's the, that's the, the feminine, the heart side, the gut side. So the way my process works now, uh, Cedric is, uh, I, I, I've, I'm learning to work with both of these sides where typically I was comfortable on the masculine side, obviously, like, you know, just planning and doing the, the way I've realized the feminine side works for me is uh, I have to step back sometimes. So I just completely stop thinking like, for example, I'm figuring out the next steps. Uh, last few months I was thinking about the, the, where the investing side can go. Right. It wasn't clear to me. Uh, I, there was just no direction in my head. And so I just, I just, I just stepped away from it completely. I was just like, you know, okay. I gave my intention that this is where, like, this is happening. Like, I, I have to do something. You know, that's the direction I want to go. Like, there's something going to happen with investing. Like, there's, there's, there's something that's going to go there. But I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know what it's going to look like. 
I just stepped away because it, the, I was trying to research it and look at it, but it just wasn't clicking. It wasn't flowing. Like even the things I was researching, uh, it just wasn't happening. So that was, I think, uh, kind of a nod from my feminine side to say, hey, just step back. Let it, let it just um, marinate in your mind. Okay. Just, just, just let it, just trust, you know, just that's the feminine side. It's just letting go. Uh-huh. Don't, you don't have to control this right now. It might not happen on your timeline. Like I would love to have just generally first hit the door, you know, hit the ground and just have a plan. Yeah, that didn't happen. Yeah. And I was like, okay, fine. Okay. It's not, it's not going to happen January 1st. Right. Like, that was my, one of my goals for this year was to get that thing off the ground. Right. And so the feminine side was, Hey, just let it go. Let the vision kind of percolate, uh, let it, let it marinate in your head. And then I think just over the last few weeks, uh, it started like a vision started forming like, Hey, it could be, it could be this way. Again, it didn't say how it's going to happen. So that's, this is now where my masculine has taken over, right? My logical brain has taken over. So my process typically, yeah. and, and this is hard, right? For me, this is very hard because I'm trying to carve a new area completely for myself now with this investing idea. Uh, like for example, I know I don't want to go work for another VC. Like I, again, cause that's for me going back to a corporate job. Like that could be a fine path, right? You go work for a VC, figure out the business and, and, uh, and then maybe something happens from there, right? That, that would be a great option. Yeah. Logically, I've ruled that out. I like, you know, that I'm not, I'm not going and working for someone like this, this is going to happen. I'm going to do it on my own. Right. So that, you know, and that came from the few months of just letting it marinate, right? Like the, to, because I know this for sure. I know not working for someone is not my answer. Right. Yeah, now, yeah, right? Yeah. Like I have to figure it out on my own. Okay. So that's a hard problem. How am I going to like, I don't have a lot of capital. Uh, I don't know a lot of super high network net worth individuals, right? Um, so how am I going to do this, right? Answer is not clear, but my process for this is like, again, like I said, is one of the things I'm really good at is research. Uh, so I'm right now deep in the weeds. Uh, I, I got a few books. Uh, uh, I've, I've, I'm very active on Twitter. Like I've, and the great thing about Twitter, for example, these is you have all these thought leaders who are openly sharing their thoughts and ideas, right? So I'm kind of now I've shifted from the feminine side of, Hey, just let things be, let things come to me to now I've shifted to the process, the logical side where I'm, I'm now doing research right now. Now my brain is it's picked this area. It's researching this. And then I think what's going to happen, it's going to, it's like waves, right? So what will happen after the research phase is the feminine side will take over again and I'll step back again. Right. Uh, because I think the information I've now received needs to be kind of put together internally. Right. And, and it, it'll be more than just logical thinking. It has to be put together. And then that's going to, I know that's going to lead to some insights. And then that'll be the next step where I jump in again on a masculine side. Right. And okay, now I got to do this, 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 and this, 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 this. Right? So that's my process. It's kind of like this coming at it, you yeah. know, like going at it and then just letting it go and coming at it. So that's, that's really my process to be honest. Uh, and then when I'm, people, when I'm with the logical side, that's when I'm using a lot of frameworks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so for some people, it looks like it go and they say going slow first, then to go fast uh, afterwards. And yeah, man, yeah. they almost never explain what is that going slow. Uh, and mainly they often can go into the analytical side, but the way you're doing it is really uh, your left side, right side, your logical, your creation side, uh, work together and let them do their things rather than trying to force um the things into the brain or into the, the feminine side that is not built for it eh? so it's um, not built for it and it's it's very hard I'm, I'm going to tell you because the the masculine side the logical side uh doesn't like sitting back right and not doing anything and not knowing because yeah. i mean I, I as much as anyone wants to get this off the ground today right I, or yesterday yeah. i want to get going right but uh i also know because again i've been on this path now the last two three years where i've 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 done a lot of foundational work. I've, I've learned to trust that there's a, there's a heart, there's a gut, you know, there's a brain, all of these work together. Right. And I can't be go, 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 go all the time. Right. Because again, that's going back to survival mode. Cause then I'm, if, if I'm coming at it from an abundant mindset, I know that no matter what the timing is, it's all going to work out. It, it, yeah. it'll, it'll line up. I'm on my highest path. Right. That's what that, you know, I, I, that's walking the walk, right? That's having a faith that it's going to work out, but I have to trust the process because it's, it's never going to be at the speed that my logical mind needs. Uh, but you know, what happens is sometimes things go slower, but in that slowness, you also learn a lot, right? Sometimes 
you know, maybe, maybe you'll come across, you know, in that slowness, there might be some shadow work to be done, right? Maybe there's some shadow work about, hey, maybe there's still some remnant feelings about, hey, I'm not good enough to do this, or I don't trust myself to do this, or whatever, right? Like any anything that might slow you down, down the, the or trip you up later, right? So I think it probably looks slower in the near term, but probably in the long term, it you know, you're probably getting way farther ahead because you're, you're coming at it a very holistic way. It's hard to even describe how it is. It, it's just become a way of life for me, to be honest, right now. Uh, uh, but yeah, it, it is a struggle still sometimes for the logical mind. Wait, wait, you, you're fully building the journey. So you're not looking at the outcome. You simply don't know what is yeah. the outcome. And may, yeah. many, many people, me included, uh, am or used to look at what is the outcome? What do I want to get out of this? Uh -oh. And then just going over this, rushing to this, rather than really... What you are doing is uh, consciously building the path, looking what the path brings you, learning from the path, I, I, as you just said. So my assumption is then also that it um, needed from you a kind of a mind switch, eh? what we have been uh, talking about it, and the reflex of thinking outcome-based. How do you work with this? That is a great point. And, you know, I still struggle with it, Cedric. Uh, I mean, I know internally what I'm trying to embody is, to, you know, to judge decisions based on, to not based on outcomes, right? Because you might make a bad decision. Like someone might buy Dogecoin just because Elon <laughs> Musk told her to buy a Dogecoin yeah. and, and hey, it goes to the moon, right? Yeah. You got lucky, right? But that's not skill, right? That's not something that you can uh, rely on on the long run, right? Because yeah, you sure you got lucky on this one Dogecoin bet, but the next time some sort of monkey coin or ape coin comes out, uh, it's probably it's probably going to revert to the mean, and you're going to be burned the other way, right? Like in the long run, you, you, that's not a strategy. You can't. The strategy can't be, you know, I'm just going to rely on. I mean, we need luck for sure, right? In in life, but if that's all you're doing, like you're going to, it'll revert to the mean, right? It's just it balances out, right? So that's something that I, and I think this is this is why I'm I'm going through this sort of very deliberate process right now is just be in the moment make the best decision in this moment. And if the best decision is the moment to do nothing, to rest, you know, that's the best decision versus, or no, I go full out, you know, like go 18 hours a day. That might be needed for, for, for a phase, right? But that's not something that's going to sustain itself. And and the biggest thing that I've learned, uh, my biggest teacher for outcome-based decisions has been investing. Okay. Uh, so I'll give an example. So crypto worked out really well really well right uh, and if i were to say that i it was all due to my great decision no there was some good luck there as well right the market turn and that worked out i mean i still believe in the thesis of crypto like the decent like my thesis was decentralization across all aspects of life is where we're headed and so i believe in this and i'm going to invest in this based on that the fact that there were like you know amazing returns that came out of it you know that was sort of out of my you know but it felt great right but it was out of my but then I had this other investment site where I've done on public stocks where I, I picked another thesis that hasn't panned out yet. And it's like, it, it's been like, it panned out initially for a bit. And then now it's been a year and a half, two years where it's just been like, I've been down. Like I've been, there were some of those investments have been down 50%, 55%, like, you know, and, and that's where I had to step back and like, it feels like crap to look at, you know, things that are, you, you don't want to be down that much. Right. Uh, and so I had to look at that, like, Hey, I constantly look at it like, did, did I make the wrong decision? Like, am I, because the outcome hasn't been great so far, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, but every time I go back to it and I'm, I'm like, I ask myself, would I do this again? And the answer is yes, I would. I still would. Yeah, sure. My, maybe my timing was off and I had to learn maybe, maybe I was, uh, you know, I, I was way too early to that market. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm still being punished and, and pounded uh, down. Uh <laughs> And so that's the learning I'm taking. And that's where investing, you know, it, it, it really like, and it, it taught me that a lot of, even like, I would say even till last week, like I was feeling like crap because they, they're still getting pounded. Those stocks are still getting pounded. And, and, you know, here I am trying to work, stay away from outcome-based decisioning, but I'm still, I'm still victim to that sometimes. Your mind just falls into that trap constantly. So it's a constant thing to watch yourself that, Hey, don't judge yourself. I mean, it, it's, yes, you want the great outcome, but, uh, go back to the first principle. What was the decision process that led to this, right? And the outcome hasn't panned out, but it, it's still a struggle, man. If I say I figured that out, I'd be lying. <laughs> yeah, and I really love you mentioned the first principle because many, yeah. not many, actually very, very few companies and people are working based on first principles. Um, yeah. 
do you have a few or at the, at the same, do you have a few that you say, okay, this is something that people can train themselves or work daily with to, to keep on thinking back on those first principles? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, uh, I think the way the first principles works is uh, if I'm looking at any area, like call it investing or like an investing thesis, uh, you know, uh, I think, I think it's, it's a bit of an art um, and it's a bit of a skill. You, you get better at it over time. Uh, I think the, the problem we have in our current society is that not problem. It's actually, it's actually a huge benefit. There's a lot of information available, a lot mm -hmm. of information available. The challenge is that the signal to noise ratio is, is not great. Like there's a lot of noise and it's very hard to pick out that signal. So I think that's a, that's the thing that for me, I've gotten better at picking out. I'm not, I'm not great still, but I've gotten better. And I, I think the way that process works is, uh, you know, it, it's just been over experience, right? Like just, just, I think over time, uh, what I find is the more you do something. So, uh, what, you know, what's that saying that, uh, good, good decisions come from experience and experience comes from bad decisions, you know, so that, that sort of thing. So I think whatever for anyone who wants to get into something, just start doing it. Uh, don't, again, don't, don't, don't tie your, your worth to outcomes, right? Like, so don't so kind of separate, like we just spoke about separate from outcomes, but you have to practice, you have to get into the, whatever it is. So for me, like I picked investing. And so I've been, I'm not a professional investor by any means, but I've been very, I've been managing a lot of my portfolio for the last two years, very actively. Right. Um, and that's, that's showed me what my biases are. For example, like being tied to outcomes or even things like other biases, you know, that we learn about confirmation bias, you know, looking for things that to, to confirm my investment and staying away from things that, yeah. um, that might, might invalidate my thesis. Right. So there's a list, so many biases, so many shadows that, that come up. So for me, it, it's, I, I think what I've learned is that you get better at snuffing that stuff out as, as you kind of get into more, more practice uh, uh, rather than just kind of reading about it a lot and, and doing a lot of theory. It's great to read about stuff and research, but you have to, you have to be in the weeds. And, and that's, that's how you're, uh, I think the way the first principles work is uh, there are mental models that, that help for sure. And, and, you know, lots of great smarter people have talked about these great mental models, but uh, I think what happens is the more knowledge you sort of bring in, the more thinking you do about something, uh, the more your intuition also gets better mm -hmm. for that area. Your yeah. gut feel gets better because you maybe it's a pattern matching or whatever that happens. And that goes back to the masculine and feminine thing again, right? Because then you can you can do a lot of logical thinking, but then there's also gut and brain and, and things that, that can kind of work together. So that's my first principles, man. Like I, I think for me, if I'm looking at a new area, I come at it at a blank slate, uh, like just kind of like beginner's mind and it is beginner's mind. Like, but for me, the exciting part is anytime I'm looking at something new, I love learning. Right. So yeah. I, I know I'm coming at it as a, as a complete novice and I know going in that I'm probably going to make mistakes, but I have all my other experiences, all the other, all the other stuff I've built in to bring to this, but there'll be new mistakes to be made. Right. So I don't know if that answered your question, but yeah, that's, that's sort of my, yeah, definitely. Because I mean, Oh, you're in a you're in a better position than than many other people, and who are still in that uh, golden cage. Um, and not everybody will leave uh, their current situation. But if you look at making a, a, a mind shift, what would you uh, advise to people what they can do in their current situation? Great question. Uh, yeah, I, I don't advise the path I took for everyone, like to just quit and uh, sit there and and, yeah. uh, and be there. But yeah, if, if you are feeling, I, I th and I love how you describe it, Cedric, if you are feeling caged, if, if, if you're feeling like you're being restrained somehow, then um, I mean, I think, I think it, one thing you have to realize is that, uh, and I realized it pretty early on, no one's going to come, it's not to sound rude or no one's going to come save you. No one's going to come pull you out of that cage, like, right? Like no one's going to come. It, it is up to you. You have to make that decision. So it starts with you. First thing you have to decide is that this is not working out. Like, you know, I, I need a change, right? I, I need to get out of this case. So that's, that's the first thing you have to commit to that. Hey, if you don't even commit to that, like if one, you have to, well, first thing is you have to realize that you are in a cage, right? Like you are feeling caged and you have to face those feelings. You have to face those emotions. It's going to be uncomfortable. Like I said, that's the shadow work. You have to face that whatever, and it might not be pretty. It might tell you that, Hey, 
you know what you've done so far is not right for you or or whatever it, it, it couldn't be it can get pretty ugly but whatever it is you have to face that um the next thing is you know committing to okay i i need to make a change and and the a very practical way of making that change i think you know i mean one path could be what i've done like you know if 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 you have the luxury of doing that and stepping away uh, like i said i don't i don't recommend that for everyone um i mean really honestly the way you'll have to get away from that is uh ideal way is if you have a job uh that's paying your bills and paying your cash flow you know and i think you're a great example of that cedric is 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 you know just figure out um start start doing things in parallel right like yeah, like and and that will require that is a mind shift shift that and that you know that requires people say willpower or or uh you know being disciplined but hey you know if 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 being free or whatever that vision is you know for your life that you want if if that matters to you then this is not willpower this is just something that you're going to do right yeah. um and so maybe keep that job you know and, and maybe if i were to do it again maybe i would have kept the job and uh that you know that would have made the finance side a little easier um but but go out and figure out start doing things in parallel so you know whether it maybe it might be just starting a podcast maybe yeah. it's writing maybe it's uh starting to post on social media or twitter about your thoughts and on or maybe it's starting to research some areas right but there's so many things you can do uh without having you know going crazy right uh mm-hmm. and then slowly that maybe it's talking to more people maybe it's attending conferences uh there's there's so many that's the great thing today you can do everything at home from your laptop right yeah. like yeah. the world can come to you right uh but the first thing is definitely face do your shadow work i i recommend that to everyone like face your demons uh and don't run away from them and then make a commitment and then balance your masculine and feminine i guess those are the three messages i have yeah. uh work, work work with that process and that that will lead you to um, glorious places uh, it's yeah. going to be very uncomfortable it's it's very easy this is very easy stuff but it's it, um actually sorry i was just saying it the other way it's simple stuff but it's not easy that's yeah. that. simple and easy, but not easy Uh, yeah great input great great uh, yeah. input so uh so we are coming now at the end of the the podcast and i asked to everybody the three same questions um yeah. so uh the first one is what would you have done differently um honestly nothing like it's it's a, it's it's a, i know sorry cliche answer uh it's 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 great it's it's been it's been a very messy journey very messy journey for me like actually the first 15 16 years were much cleaner it was like a very uh, structured journey uh, and something i look back and think that you know i wish you that all come i wish i had done something different. i wish i had realized this sooner why didn't i realize this sooner in my 20s or you know where uh, you know i had the whole you know uh, i wasn't as older but you know what to be honest every every down every up shaped me i, I don't think i would have i think this was the path for me like mm-hmm. i had to walk that path to even come to these realization i had to go through 15 years of struggling with corporate life and you know all that time because that was the trigger that was a catalyst it was needed for me to make this pivot so this pivot wouldn't have happened without it i think so yeah, yeah. Uh, all Nothing. right thank you and then the second one is so you're uh, you have a, a bunch of heroes uh, i know and you also have a podcast or books that you really inspired you and that really helped you in uh, shaping your decision and your path yeah yeah no lots of lots of um i think i think for me um in general the spiritual kind of uh journey was was kicked off uh i think by um, Eckhart Tolle uh, uh a book i read by him called the power of now uh this is back in like 2009 like 2008 like that was the first time i got introduced to the concept of being present and being mindful it took me another 15 years to actually put it into practice but yeah. uh the the whole concept sort of blew me away so just from spirituality i think i think he was a big influence and then uh there's been tons of influences like i said on twitter like i follow a lot of spiritual accounts there's too many to list but uh you know they they kind of help shape the the journey in terms of um uh, uh more more on the strategy investing side uh definitely people like monish pabrai he's a piece of very famous value investor who followed the principles of Warren Buffett um you know so that you know that side of things uh on on strategy and 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 corporate uh there's there's someone there's a thinker Nassim Nassim Taleb uh he he's made a big influence on just how I approach things and uh asymmetric bets and and black swans and you know all, all the great stuff that that he's written about um 
Another person is Rory Sutherland. Uh, he's, he's, I think, vice chairman at uh, Ogilvy, uh, a marketing firm in the UK. Um, he's written a great book, um, which I highly recommend everyone reads. It's, I think it's called Alchemy. Uh, and it's, it's, it's interesting. It's about how sometimes we think too logically for our own good. Yeah. Uh, and he gives examples of you know, how, how there's been great success stories. Of, I mean, you still have to obviously be rational and logical, but sometimes being too logical completely constrains your creativity. And so I highly recommend that. Uh, and recently I've been reading a book. Uh, it's called Seven Powers on for people interested in strategy. Uh, Seven Powers, amazing book uh, yeah, that I highly recommend for anyone looking at strategy. Yeah, yeah, very good one. I'm actually rereading a good strategy, bad strategy uh, right now. Yes, that's another one. That's oh. another one. Yeah, it completely changed how I looked at strategy. Uh, yeah. Because before that, for me, strategy was, I mean, strategy is for a large part, still a lot of art. There's a lot of feminine sort of creativity, yeah. but you need a process around it. And that yeah. book really framed my process because uh, I didn't yeah. really have a good process before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um... The last question, um, we already uh, went over it a couple of times, but uh, when is the time for a pivot? Uh, I think you'll know. I think, uh, I think uh, whenever, again, it's not something you force, like you don't, you don't wake up and say like, hey, today I want to pivot. But, but I think, I think you'll start feeling it internally. Like there's something, you know, if, if there's voices in, in, inside you that maybe you're feeling like you're not, it's not happening here for whatever reason um and that that's still not might not be the time to pivot maybe it's just you know you just need to do some shadow work or mm -hmm. uh there's just some things you need to face that's not always the answer like it's not always you know just throwing everything away and restarting is not always the answer but i, I think i think you ha you'll have to trust your gut and your heart uh in that and um um and the, you know to to know when it's right time for you and the only way you can trust your gut and your heart is if you do your shadow work if you if you face uh, the storms inside of you, the demons inside of you, uh, that helps then bring more light into you, right? And and then then it'll it'll give you more confidence. Versus just if you don't face your shadows, if you don't face your darkness, and you're just then you're just jumping from things to things because you're just kind of running away from the shadows in that point. So to understand if that's the difference, you face your shadows first, and then you decide, okay, now what do I see? What what do I what do I want to do? Right? Then you make a more empowered, conscious decision versus like an unconscious kind of. I, I just want to jump from thing to thing because you don't want to be that either, right? Where you're just jumping constantly, pivoting, and, right. and you're exactly. not getting anywhere. Right. Right. So it's, yeah. it's not, a, there's no clear answer, but these are some of the things that helped me. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Amit. It was uh, very enlightening. We went very deep, um, really hit the fundamentals of uh, your thinking, your shift in thinking. I'm sure many people will be inspired by uh, your, your path that you're taking. Uh, very powerful, very courageous, and uh, thank you for sharing this with us. No worries, Cedric, and uh, thank you. For great questions, and uh, just I, I enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much. Wish you all the best in uh, finding your path and building your path further. All right, great. Thanks, Cedric.